Uh, yeah. I got a haircut actually for this tournament, so. She, she, <laughs> they actually paid for the haircut. This is Katie Reynolds with Ulti World. We are here with Jack Versu and Eugene Yoon from Dartmouth, having just won a close semifinal battle with UNC Pleiades. Jack Eugene, how are you feeling after that game? Uh, it feels good. I think that coming into this tournament, um, we hadn't really seen our full squad together in a while. Um, we had a lot of people who were abroad over the winter and then some injuries, and so we didn't really know what our ceiling was coming into the tournament, and so it's been fun to like find that ceiling, and we had a really, a really great quarterfinal game versus Western. I think we got, got better as a team doing that, so it's fun to find a new ceiling as we're working. Yeah, I mean, I feel like our program is a little bit different due to the quarter system. Like Northwest Challenge was the first time where we had half our team come back from being off all winter, and that's the whole regular season. So we're trying to figure out things at the end of the season. Um, it's good to see things are starting to click, and it's great. Does this run to the finals feel different than past years? You've done this before. Does this one feel any different than the past two years? Um, I think as I get older, I think it feels different. Um, sort of like coming into leadership position and, and gaining more experience in that position. Um, I think I sort of become like more aware of what we need to do. I think my sophomore year I was just like really excited about everything and then sort of as I became a captain, like being aware of more strategy things. Um, and so for me, I think that I'm, that I'm growing mostly as um, in my position as, as an older player on the team. Hey, uh, Edward Stevens, Ulti World. Um, I, uh, uh, I wanted to uh, ask uh, how through um, the turnover that happens year after year in college and with the kind of uh, uh, flighty nature of uh, uh, young people from uh, day to day, how Dartmouth for the last three years manages to stay focused and build a season to peak at just the right time the way you appear to be doing again this year? Um, I think it's Sometimes it might not seem like it, but it is our system and our process. We haven't changed anything in the past four or five years, teaching everyone the same strategy, same zone, uh, same dump set. So having players evolve from the B dump to the A dump to the quarterback and handler, <coughs> it's it, everyone can, whoever vacated that position can teach the next person coming up. Uh, so I think that has helped. Sometimes it doesn't look like it where we can just like, all right, toss the system out the window, let's just play it. And uh, We have that benefit, which is great, but I think being able to fall back on a system and then have that be taught to the next generation coming up really helps. Yeah, and I think um, over the years we've seen a lot of, uh, we have a lot of people on our team who played before, and then we also have a lot of people who are like really big contributors who started as freshmen in college. Um, and so that's something that I think gives our team a lot of energy too, is to see people like uh, Maggie Pizzo is now a senior, right, and she never played before, and, and now she's one of our top players. So it's, it's really great. I think that gives us a lot of energy. Daniel Prentice, UltiWorld.com. You mentioned freshmen coming in who haven't played before. Caroline Tornquist has certainly played before. Feels like a really important part of the way the roster is built this season. How important has she been in this run for y'all? Uh, she's been, uh, she clicked with our system very well. I feel like her playing style, being able to <clears throat> see the open space and you know break down when we need to has really clicked with our system and being able to integrate. We have other freshmen who you know have played before, um, but doesn't, I feel like the field vision is not there yet, especially with our system. CT amazed me by being able to come in just keeping that field vision aware and being able to, you know, really uh, partake in our system very well. Yeah, I think we had a lot of, have a lot of really big freshman contributors this uh, season. I think we like we saw Grace score a huge goal. Mm -hmm. JQ's been huge in our cup. Um, Cindy never played before, but really making a difference in our cup. Uh, Becky Thompson with Fulcrum Media. Um, have you had a chance to watch Ohio State or UCSD at all throughout the course of the weekend? And what are some things that you're going to do to prepare for the final tomorrow? Uh, I saw the Ohio State game, uh, the one that went to the double game point. I feel like I try not to focus too much on what they do as long as it's very, what I call it, like standard ultimate. Um, you know, especially in the wind, it's a lot of field positioning. So I try to take that and just <coughs> try to have our players focus on our game and try to run things our way. Yeah, uh, I'm going to drink water from the comfort of the air conditioning. <laughs> Hey, Graham Gerhardt from TheUltiWorld.com. 
Uh, my question has to do with your short roster. Obviously, y'all have a, the shortest roster at this tournament. How have you guys uh, been working to you know, endure through the weather, um, the heat, the, the games you've had to play? Yeah, I think that you know when we have a short roster and we're we're even like rarely able to play sevens at practice, and when we can, we have like one sub, and so I think people are like people are ready. They're, the expectation is that there's never a sub. The expectation of playing six on six for you know an hour at practice, right? And so I think that like that kind of mentality, it's almost like wow, we have a sideline now at at nationals. It's almost like a little little extra. Don't forget about the heat training we did. The heat training, that's right. <laughs> we had players, you know. 60 degree weather, 70 degree weather, but you know, playing players wearing full sweats, three yeah. layers of t-shirts, cotton, trying to do our best, what we can in the uh, New Hampshire environment. Yeah. Um, I know it's kind of rare for y'all at nationals to really be tested late in games. You've had two today where you had a break against Western Washington to win, had to fend off a comeback from North Carolina. Uh, for a team that hasn't had a whole lot of experience in those moments, um, where did the confidence come from that you knew you'd be able to pull out those close games that you don't have a whole lot of experience in? I think it's uh, veterans. Uh, they might not have that experience in the college environment, but they do have that experience from the club environment. So bringing that down and just leading by example, uh, if they seem panicked, then our whole team kind of follows suit. But when they're, when they're all calm and collective and say, we got this, um, every, everyone believes. Absolutely. Uh, and this one's just for Eugene. Um, everything has been written about Jack. Kind of, ex you know, I think we've written just about all we can write about them and the impact they have on the field. That we could see that every time they play. What has Jack really meant to this Dartmouth program and behind the scenes that we don't get to see? Oh, their team first attitude is the best. They always come and care about the team so much. You don't see that. You don't have the mics on them during our huddles. You don't have them. You don't see them at practice, leading, teaching, uh, coming out with, you know, talking to each player one by one. Having, having them just believe team first over themselves is just the number one takeaway that I can say about Jack. Thanks, Eugene. <laughs> Um, Jack, a question for you. Um, obviously, you're a finalist for the Callahan Award tomorrow. Is that going to be on your mind at all during the finals? Uh, not really. I don't know. I mean, I think that there's sort of like a mixed bag of like caring too much what other people think right it's like fun when everyone's like stoked about it and then it's and then if people are like not then it's not fun and I think just something I've learned I think over the course of my time in the college division um is just to like like focus on like what like the people who I think matters like what they think right like if my teammates think that I'm like doing the right thing for them um and to sort of like keep the focus where I want it I think is really where my focus is Katie here again. Uh, I want to, hopefully you guys can speak to the impact your zone defense had in that semifinal game, particularly the cup you were setting on the UNC handlers and um, really giving them a lot of trouble. Um, it gave them trouble. It slowed down the pace, which we wanted. Uh, but second half, we had to come out of it, uh, play more person defense because they figured it out. <laughs> <laughs> they were, you know, obviously by the upwind goals. So, you know, zone defense works. But once you give them op multiple opportunities to see it, they're gonna figure it out. And uh, we didn't have any, uh, we didn't have much opportunity this year. We usually have a second zone defense that we like to play, but we never had that chance to work on it this year. Another question for both of you. Uh, I would love to give you the opportunity to speak to your warm-up shirts and why your team is wearing them. Yeah, totally. So um, it says, if your policy erases people, change it. And so we made these shirts. Um, based on some conversations with the Dartmouth bureaucracy, basically, um, we wanted to change our name from Dartmouth Women's Ultimate with an E to Dartmouth Women's Ultimate replacing the E with an X. Um, and so the, that word's history is sort of long, but is generally used to denote groups of people who have a connection to the word woman. Um, as our team does, we play in the women's division, we have some women, but also with, as a, represents a, a larger um, group of identities, like trans and non-binary identities. Um, and we were told by Dartmouth that we could not use this word um, based on sort of an outdated policy about the name having to be the same um, as your national governing body's name, so technically because USAU calls it the women's division with an E. Dartmouth is enforcing this as sort of um, an outdated policy that was is being used to stop us from using a word um, that I think they see as like too out there to represent Dartmouth. 
um, or is like too liberal or is too, I don't know, too trans, too something. Um, and so that's why we're wearing these shirts. Uh, I wonder uh, how y'all felt when that last throw went up. <laughs> um, I mean, I think that all of us were just standing in the end zone like, you should cut, I'm in the end zone. Um, <laughs> which probably wasn't how we were supposed to be playing, I don't know. <laughs> As a coach, seeing a person open 10 yards downfield and then got looked off is a little saddening, but can't argue with a catch and a goal. <laughs> Eugene, Jack, thank you so much for your time. Congratulations on that thank win. You. We look forward to watching you tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you.